morning, Grace Church. Happy Easter, happy Resurrection Day. We're so glad to be celebrating our risen Lord with you this morning. My name is Sherry Lacey. You may not recognize me in this garb, but I have a We Are Better Together t-shirt on underneath this. I want you to know that. It is Easter and it is time to celebrate. Well, I have a few announcements before we get going. And the first one is that we wanna make sure that you know that tonight at 6 p.m. we're going to have a Grace Church meetup and it's gonna be on Zoom. Want to make sure that you are a part of that. So please, please, please check Facebook, get the Zoom login, join us at 6 p.m. You'll get to see all your friends. I want to also announce that we have a brand new YouTube channel. So if you go to YouTube and search Grace Church Fort Myers Shores, you'll find the videos of the last few services and a whole bunch more content that we're adding. I want to also ask you, check your emails. There are tons of opportunities for you to get connected. We have new online classes and small groups and book studies. We are getting connected better than ever as we are separated. It's crazy, but it's true. I'm really grateful for technology. So I want to um, begin our time of worship this morning with a, a responsive reading, and it's a responsive reading that is right out of the scriptures when the disciples were trying to identify themselves to each other as they met and greeted one another, they would have this greeting. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Amen. All right, we're going to start our worship off with this beautiful traditional hymn. is the best news on the planet and this is the time in our service where we declare the truth we declare the things we know we know them for sure we know them deep down in our knower would you recite the creed with me please i believe in god the father almighty maker of heaven and earth and in jesus christ his only son our lord who was conceived by the holy spirit born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, 
the Holy Universal Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Well, friends, it is terrific to be with you this morning. And we've come to the point in our worship time this morning that I want to invite you to consider worshiping God with your tithes and offerings. I want to thank you for your incredible generosity through this unprecedented time. I want to remind you that if you have uh, had a setback in your finances, you take care of what you need to take care of. Um, and if you're able to give, we would welcome your gift. Um, there are three ways to give right now. You can put a check in the mail. You can drop a check by the office during office hours. Or you can text to give. The number will be coming up on your screen right now. 239-205-3123 is the number to dial. You can set up an account and give really easy, easily that way. So I'm going to say a prayer, and I'm going to ask Julian to play a little bit for us while, while I pray. Well, Father, we thank you. We thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your generosity. We thank you for your care. We thank you for your presence. We thank you for your son. We thank you for your grace and your mercy. God, we come to you today and we just declare we need you. We need you more than ever. People need the Lord. They need to hear the word of the Lord. Father, we thank you for using these gifts to make your word known. We thank you, Lord. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, uh, whenever things get really challenging in my life, I compare it to a time when my life was an absolute mess. Um, I remember a time my, my husband lay dying in a hospital, my car engine blew up, my two-year-old had a fever, and in the midst of this very, very windy storm, I'm holding my son in the kitchen trying to comfort him and my kitchen ceiling caved in on the floor and all of those things happened within a 24 hour period. Uh, I was stressed, could you imagine? <laughs> well, I borrowed from a book to describe that day. The book is entitled Alexander in the Terrible, Horrible, No Good, Very Bad Day. And that summed it up. It was a terrible, horrible, no good, very bad day. Now, I'm not saying that about today because it's Easter and nothing can stop, stop us from celebrating that our Savior lives. But this is a resurrection morning like no other. Like you, I've never witnessed anything like we are experiencing together. Like you, I've had to make so many adjustments, literally in everything I do in my life. And things are, quite frankly, a mess, the likes of which we've never seen. Physically, relationally, economically, even spiritually, um, if we're honest, most of us are having some uh, terrible, horrible, no good, very bad days. Not all of them, not all of them, but some are doozies. They're just crazy. I don't know what you would call that, but I call it a mess. But again, it's Easter, and so I really shouldn't be focusing on the mess, should I? I mean, I should lead this morning with the story of the resurrection. Christ the Lord is risen today. Hallelujah. As only God would have it, six months ago, when we were determining what our sermon series was going to be, 
we planned a series of messages called Bless This Mess. God went ahead of us. He knew exactly what we were going to need. And, and he knew that we would need it to talk about God bless this mess we're in. And also that on Easter, that we would, we would come to a, a knowledge of Jesus where we would find friendship and companionship and the only hope that we have in this mess. So we look to the pages of the Bible, and in those pages we find people we can relate to and, and also a Savior named Jesus who cares. The Bible is the book, and I say book with a capital B. It's the most verifiable book we have about God. It has been read and studied and pondered and questioned and doubted and celebrated more than any other book ever published. The God-given, Spirit of God-inspired words in this book have inspired people time and time again. In this book, we find hope, we find peace, we find joy, we find everything we need. The words in this book are true and they can be trusted. They are also words that are ruthlessly honest. They are words that deliver the hope the world has needed over the millennia. The words that we have needed so many times in our history, the words for people in difficult situations whose lives are in a mess, words for people in some of the dark nights of the soul, words that we need today. In these pages, we see we're not the only ones in human history that have found themselves in difficult situations, particularly in the area of relationships. Now, the first family, Adam and Eve and Cain and Abel, well, they couldn't get it right either. Their relationships were totally messed up. You read Genesis, you'll find out. And, and for us here today, well, there's nothing like a shelter-in-place order to reveal um, the messes in our relationships, right? So in this five-week series that we're starting today, we're going to learn together how God wants to heal our broken relationships, how he wants to move into our dysfunction, not only with the people in our lives, but in our relationship with God himself. And we're going to discover, and I pray we experience together, that God actually wants to bless this mess. And we see this in the most important event in all of the Bible and I believe in all of human history. That is what we celebrate today, the, the Christ, the Messiah who rose again. Um, I, want, I want to invite you to go with me to the very first Easter. It was in the morning and... Uh, those disciples who had been following Jesus for three years were experiencing the third terrible, horrible, no good, very bad day. Many had put all of their energy into following Jesus. Um, over the course of, of just a few days, all of their plans had fallen apart. This one that they had backed, the one that they had believed in, was betrayed and beaten and abandoned and, and crucified, and, and then they had to borrow a grave to lay him in. So this, this movement they had put all their energy into it was over. All of their ambition and all of their dreams and hopes and plans done, just destroyed. This man that they had sacrificed their lives for uh, was dead, and, and hope turned to terror almost overnight. One day, they were living a dream, and the next was a nightmare. Little did they know in the darkness of that Sunday morning, their upside-down, messed-up lives were about to be turned right-side up. Now, I want to tell you how this story happened. There was an eyewitness to this, 
a man named John, and, and he said early in the morning when it was still dark, uh, some of Jesus' followers, including a woman named Mary Magdalene, they, they made their way to Jesus' tomb. Now, when she and, and the other women came to, to care for Jesus' body, they discovered this giant stone that had been in front of the tomb had been rolled away, and, and they looked in, and they were shocked to find the tomb was empty. I just cannot even fathom what she must have been thinking. What happened here? What happened? Where is my Lord? Well, Mary assumed that Jesus' body had been stolen. So she runs as fast as she can to tell Peter and John, who ran as fast as they could, to the tomb. And the only thing they found in there were strips of linen that they had used to wrap Jesus' body before they'd put him in the tomb. At this point, no one knows what's going on. Nobody. And so the guys took off for Jerusalem, and, and Mary stayed by the tomb, and she was just overwhelmed with grief. It was bad enough that Jesus, the one that she loved so dearly, was dead, but now this. She decided to look again into the tomb. She saw two angels. And then she heard a voice, and, and she thought it was a voice of the gardener, that is, until she heard her name, Mary. She immediately turned, and she saw this was no gardener. It, it was Jesus himself, and he was alive. And, and she knew it the second he called her by name, Mary. It must have been music to her ears. Because, you know, Mary... She had a reputation for a messed up life. Well, we don't know all her story, but, but we do know that she had been tormented by demons until Jesus had set her free. And when Jesus calls her by name, that first Easter morning in the dawn light, her hope is restored. Throughout the story of Easter, Jesus calls people by name. Mary had a messy past. Jesus called her by name. Thomas's mess was called doubt. He, he called Thomas by his name. Peter was a mess. He was filled with shame because he had denied that he even knew Jesus and Jesus called him by name. To these and others whose stories and messes we can relate to, Jesus softly and tenderly and persistently calls us by name. Petra, uh, Pastor Rich Velota says, our government knows us by our social security number, our doctor knows us by our patient number, our bank knows us by our account number, our mobile service by our phone number, and our insurance by our policy number. But Jesus knows us by name. He calls us by name. Wherever you are, wherever you've been, whatever you've done, Jesus knows you. He loves you. He calls you by name. Later that day, we pick up the story of what was going on with the rest of the disciples, and we are going to find out that we have something in common with them. Let's look at what happens on Easter evening, and it's in John 20, 19 through 20. That Sunday evening, the disciples were meeting behind locked doors. They were sheltering in place. <laughs> They were meeting behind locked doors because they were afraid of the Jewish leaders. Suddenly Jesus was standing there among them. Peace be with you, he said. As he spoke, he showed them the wounds in his hands and his side, and they were filled with joy when they saw the Lord. Man, I think we can relate to this like never before. We know what it's like to be forced to shelter in place, and, and we are, are rightfully cautiously fearful 
of this virus, but let's look again at the first sentence and notice the source of the disciples' fear. That Sunday evening, the disciples were meeting behind locked doors because they were afraid of the Jewish leaders. See, the door was locked, and they were huddled inside because they were afraid that the same leaders that came after Jesus and crucified him were now coming after them. This is an obvious and very real threat. But like our situation, fear leads to even more of a mess and more chaos. In the disciples' case, all hope about the kingdom of God seemed lost. And, and again, many of the disciples had gone all in in following Jesus. What were they going to do next? Some had left their businesses and their hometowns and their families, and now they're in Je Jerusalem and they're hiding and their plans are demolished and they're scared out of their minds. The word in this verse for fear is the word phobos. It means something that strikes terror in a person. Now, sometimes our fears are real and they are intense. Following Jesus doesn't mean that we are never going to have fears. We're not emotionally stunted, friends. Like these disciples, we, we have some things to fear, and some of those things are real. We're not making them up. And the disciples are scared, but they're not alone. It's better to have a friend with you when you're scared, isn't it? In these days, we all need to be together in this, even though we have to stand six feet apart. That's why I, I was reminding you this morning in the announcements to, to get on the Facebook page and find out all the new things that are uh, going on. Uh, go on the YouTube channel. You'll see familiar faces that love you. Um, make sure that you are getting the Grace Church email. There are so many brand new opportunities for you to engage. You do not have to be isolated while you're in isolation. Does that make sense? We're doing this together. Come and do it with us. Come to our weekly uh, Sunday evening meetup on Zoom. You'll see all kinds of people that you know and love. Let's, let's stay apart together. All right, now let's get back to the story. The disciples are, are terrified. They are hiding behind locked doors and boom, Jesus, Jesus was standing there among them. I have good news, friends. He is also here now. He is here now with us and he has been here all along. He has not left us. His presence is real right now. God is never afraid to enter into our emptiness or our mess. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit is not repulsed or, or repelled by our chaos or our fears. And so Jesus spectacularly shows up behind locked doors to the frightened disciples. Pastor Michael Frost tells a story about when he was uh, invited to speak at a conference and he went to the conference and instead of meeting at a nice convention center or a hotel, they had, had decided the meeting place was going to be in this glorious old Gothic church. But when he stepped into the church, there were no pews, there were no chairs. Instead, in the middle of this Gothic church, this cathedral, was a pile of raw, real, rank, stinking garbage. 
the leaders of the conference invited the participants to, to come close, to, to stand around, and, and the, the pastors came up in robes like this one and, and led the participants in a traditional liturgy. And then at one point, in this wet, smelly garbage, one pastor reached into the trash and pulled out a loaf of bread. It was in a sealed container, and he opened this loaf of bread, and he broke it. He said, this is the body of Christ. The other pastor went into the trash, pulled out a bottle of wine and a cup, and he poured it out, and he said, this is the blood of Christ. And they took communion together, gathered around a stinking trash heap. The lesson was this. Jesus has entered into the garbage, the waste, the stench, and the mess of this world. Jesus made the first move. He came to us. He is with us in the middle of it all. In fact, wherever you are, whatever mess you're in, Jesus has a message for you. And it's peace be with you. Peace be with you. He said the same things to his disciples. Scripture says as he spoke, he showed them the wounds in his hands and at his side. He said, peace be with you. The risen Christ speaks peace. He is our peace. He is our only hope and our only source for peace. When Jesus says, peace be with you, he's basically announcing his presence I am here. The Prince of Peace is here, he says. And the risen Jesus not only speaks peace, but he shows them his wounds, and he wants us to know that this gift of peace came with a price. It's not only a declaration of peace, but, but a demonstration of how that peace was paid for. This is the big idea. If we were gathering in the sanctuary today, I would ask you to pick up a pen and write this down. So if you have one handy right beside you today, please write this down. Right now, the resurrected Jesus offers his peace to my mess. Now I want you to hear me, friends. This is not a children's story this is not a fairy tale. This is not self-help. This is not magical thinking or positive thinking. The, the peace that we can experience, even in the midst of a global pandemic, is found based on a person and an event. The person is Jesus Christ, and the event is the resurrection. Jesus Christ has risen. He is risen indeed. Today, Easter Sunday, instead of um, spreading fear, we can speak faith. Instead of spreading panic, we can speak peace. We are going to get through this. We're going to do it together. I want to ask Jeff to come up and get in place. And I want to say to you, I don't know what you're facing today, but I do know this. Right now, even in your terrible, horrible, no good, very bad day, the resurrected Christ offers his peace in your mess. I want to say a prayer for you. These guys are going to play a beautiful song. And while they're playing, I want to ask you if you would surrender it all, whatever you're facing, 
I've heard so many stories, and I know you have too. I can't wait for us all to get together to tell them. But we're all facing something today. And I want to ask you if you would just lift your hands and surrender all of that to Jesus and tell him you need his peace. And Father, we come to you today. We are so grateful for the resurrection. We're so grateful for the price you paid for us so that we could experience peace now, Lord. And we ask you, Prince of Peace, move into our hearts, move into our lives. Let us experience peace that passes understanding today. Today, on this Resurrection Sunday, may we experience you as never before. Amen? Amen. declared he lives friends make sure you're connected with us in the weeks to come we love you we miss you happy easter happy resurrection day julian you have one more song for us right now don't you Hallelujah.
God bless you.